Really within our various ministries, we recognize individuals for their servitude, and um, we are thankful. But these individuals have served outside of ministry on their own to make a difference and to make an impact um, within their communities because of the love they have for people and the love that they have um, for individuals and for causes. And, and, and we just want to take a moment to recognize that. Pastor Bull, that you've ministered and you shared with us uh, four points, your shorter point, you owe us a point, but no. <laughs> No worries, I'm only teasing you. But as I begin to listen to that, you know, we really just need to be present. Be present in the moment and allow Holy Spirit to work on us. I have found when God works on my heart, then I can be a better person. Because sometimes you look back and say, who, who is that? Yeah, I did that just this morning. Y'all don't say anything. I said, well, what in the world? But by the same token, in that same breath, without delay, you know, we humble ourselves. Because at the end of the day, you can't be great unless there's at least one other person in the room. You can't be. And then and what I love about this is that that greatness is not, that greatness is not um, about me. There's nothing bestowed on me that says I'm great. But to God be all glory and honor and power sidebar, just plug in the orange cord. Amen. Just um, with all power and all might and authority. Can we clap it up for Joy who's climbing real tall right now? <laughs> She's been running around. I think she had some really cute heels on earlier this afternoon. I think, you know, they were all blinked out. I only witnessed it for a very brief moment. And when I looked down, she had on some glitzy sandals because she's been running back and forth. She's been serving. She's been yes. serving. She's been running from pillar to pole and all the while with a great smile. Thank you, family, for helping to shape her that way and leading her in a path that she's just a, a very humble servant. It's, she's not the only one. And while they're doing that, this is probably a good space also to recognize Rich Women's Ministry. Our uh, Deacon Pat, you met her first thing on the registration table. Can you stand? We just want to celebrate you and recognize you. pleasure to serve. And our sister Sean, come on sister Sean, they don't like this. I don't know if they keep that from me or not. But they serve with such a great heart, such a big heart. And sister Joy is still fixing our technical difficulty. We um, turned off the projector so that it wouldn't be in the background. And so now we're trying to um, make that fix. So just bear with us really quick. You got a green light? Beans. Sister um, Sean, do you mind bringing the um, binder? It's better with a photo, a, a picture. I'm a visual person, so it's better. So while they do that, we don't want to um, do too much delay. Yes, sir. But as I listen to the word of God, I also want to recognize our Dr. Valencia. <laughs> if you have been an adult learner, that is not an easy task. Any adult learners, you going back to school to do something and try to certification, I don't, you know, second degree, third degree. Well, as an adult learner, she took the journey to get her doctorate and she achieved that and trust and believe. You don't get that simply because you completed every class. You had to prove the work. The thesis had to be proven. The question asked had to be proven and she put in the work and we just want to celebrate her for that. And um, before we close, we will have a couple words from her. I just wanted to drop something. I know it's there, isn't it there? Yeah, it is. I love her song. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes. I'm going to invite our, these worker bees are running all over the place. So I'm going to do this part myself. There she is, but I'm going to do this. Come on, sister. Um, um, you know who you are. Sister uh, Latrina, thank you. You know, when we have people in our congregations, oftentimes 
we, um, we, we engage with them, but we engage with them on a limited level because often it might be after service, right? It might be uh, in between something. Maybe like we have refreshments after church, so we might have a moment just to share and engage in that aspect. But our sister Rachel has been with us since we were, people know what this means, that we were 10 100. You know, there's a few of us in the room who understand that. And she uh, traveled with us to this location. But there was something interesting that she does that she shared with me a while back. And we actually had her to, uh, to share that with our congregation, even though it wasn't a need. You can do the next slide. Can we dim the light? Just begging and pleading. Whoever's closest to it. You got flat shoes on now, too. Okay. <laughs> These divas had on heels and now they're wearing sandals. Is that better, everybody? Yeah. Okay. So, our, come on and stand up, Sister um, Rachel, and um, get all embarrassed, everybody. <laughs> Rachel Marie Anderson White. She signs for the deaf community and often signs for churches to ensure that their spiritual needs are being met as well. Rachel Marie Anderson White is a recent graduate of the Deaf Studies program at Towson University. She devotes her free time volunteering for the deaf community, particularly in the area of those with cognitive and physical difficulties supporting them in their right in the federal civil right law of equal access and opportunity. Rachel has recently been accepted as a fellow in the Baltimore City Teaching Program and will be teaching in her own classroom this upcoming 2019-20 school year. Those that were coached 12 years ago are now young adults. 
but they still reach out to Coach Tolan for advice and guidance. So, as he continues to coach and guide these young men to become outstanding citizens, he finds that there is still a need for guidance even at ages of 25 plus. Tolan is currently working on the EARN, or EARN, which stands for Empowering Americans to Revitalize a Nation Project to introduce young adults to entrepreneurship. He desires to teach young adults self-employment through home ownership to use this as the stepping stone for their future. Can we clap it up for Tolan?
Fellowship and Reach uh, Women's Ministry. We are proud and excited to be able to award you the I Reach to Serve Recognition Award for 2019. Thank you for all that you do. Blessing. someone else. And as the message resonated today, it's about how we serve with our whole heart and our whole mind and not discounting those who are around us, but understanding that there's something valuable God has given us that we can share with someone else. So today we're really excited that we were able to uh, recognize these wonderful and special people. We'd also like to celebrate our uh, speaker for today. Thank you so much. We just wanted to say thank you for uh, just a token um, gift right now. You know, rest. <laughs> um, just to say thank you um, from Rich Women's Ministry, we really, really appreciate it. We do have the um, raffle that needs to be finalized, and we're going to do that expeditiously. And uh, do you want to come now, or do you want to come after the raffle? If you're good either way. Okay, let's finalize the raffle. And I believe there's some um, people here who um, have the right ticket in hand. But also, I believe there was a winner for our icebreaker. Was that Elder Sharice? Yes. How many did you name? I'm sorry, I stepped out of the room. You named all ten? Did you have this game before? Never. Smart like that. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that you are welcome to choose a nominal gift. <laughs> from one of these tables. You get nominal, right? You work in a finance office. You know what nominal is. <laughs> and, um, and just let me know. It, and it is my pleasure to give that to you today. So um, again, thank you so much for participating. OK, are we ra uh, raffle ready? Raffle ready. ready. No. Going for the box of the Applebee's gift card. to the person that has 419 last three digits on the ticket. Three, five. 
ending three numbers, four, three, five.
broken that apostle said to me these words. And I'm living it today. She said, I know many people around you telling you to go back to your husband and go back to your church. Don't do it. It is okay what they say about you and what they think about you. God is going to restore your life on a college campus. And when you get, I had no job. When you get to that college campus, God is going to prove to everybody who you are. The students are going to adore you. You're going to get the highest degree in the land. And before you close your eyes and die, going to be the president of a college. Don't listen to them. That was 15 years ago. Wow. I'm mentored by female black women who are presidents of colleges. I will, I have finished all the steps to complete my degree. But I sat there that day I, I barely had a place to live, and I didn't know what God was going to do in my life. So I'm standing here today saying, no matter how long it takes, no matter what the word of the Lord is on your life, and no matter what the naysayers are saying, God has a plan for you. When I got on that college campus, and everything that had been done to my reputation, year by year by year, God wiped away every single thing that people were saying about me. She crazy, she out of her mind. Let me tell you something. You got to be crazy to get a doctor to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we some crazy people. Because to put yourself through that kind of torture, you got to be somebody, some kind of crazy. After that first semester, I said, God, I'm not equipped for this. He said, you're not. I am. I'm getting it through you. You're not getting a doctor. I am through you. Move out your way, people. If anything I can say to you today, move out your way. God is not you. God, you are not doing it. He is through you. But you have to surrender to that. And with her message today, when we sit in the classes, we are anomaly. We are a small group of people. We are 2% or less of the world's population. African American women with doctoral degree. 2% of the world's population. <laughs> That's a small group. And this is what we're taught. And when you get this degree, you're getting it to serve. Because the rigor your brain is going through, the calisthenics your brain is going through, is not to lord over people. What's a servant? Right. Because they don't have that rigor. They don't have that understanding. They're walking in the ignorance that you're no longer walking in. So now you are called to serve them. Yes. Yes. To serve the community. Yes. To serve the poor, the downtrodden, the uneducated, the, the women and the men who don't know if they're going or coming. That the higher you go, yes. the more God requires you to serve. So she just confirmed that word because I have stepped in some big shoes. But I know it's because God sees my heart. I'm sitting at the table with a young girl. They say, what's your name? I said, Latanya. I didn't say doctor or anything. I didn't say elder, prophet, nothing. What's your name? Latanya, because that's my name. I didn't give her a title or anything like that. Because the titles, they don't make me. And I know who God has called. He's called us to serve all of us. So everybody in here who's aspiring to go higher, 
do it as a five-star service. Yes. And anybody still with a word of the Lord that's on your life, that you're still wondering if God is going to bring that thing to pass, He can't do it without you. Uh, come on. <laughs> you got to participate in the word of the Lord that's on your life. So for some of you, you're so hurt and broken and bitter and you keep looking at your circumstances and your situations and you're calling God a liar. You don't believe he cares about you and you don't believe he's going to fulfill what he said. I'm living proof. But I had to apply for the job on the college campus. Right, right, yeah. Hello. I had to apply. I had to get turned down. And when I got turned down, God, you sure this is you? This is me. Keep applying. Do it again. I got that. Yes, okay. I, hear me. I applied for a doctoral degree program three times. I got denied three times. God, you sure this is you? That's me. Apply again. And it was because all the other times I wanted to do my thing. I wanted to be a doctor to prove to everybody that I wasn't crazy. My motive was, I heard what he said, but I was still doing it for them. But like she said, in that closet and with God, he said, this, this me and you, baby, it ain't for them. The fourth time, I didn't even have to apply. Wow. Somebody walked up to me and said, we need you in this program. You're the exact person that we have. And I have watched those women rally around me. And you are, you, we going to groom you. Trust them. All y'all entrepreneurs in here, trust them. Trust them. Make sure you're selling the right thing. Make sure you're selling the right product. Trust them. Line it up. You can't miss God when you are aligned to God. Trust them. Frida, I love her. And y'all know that OD. Yeah, so she's my girl. She's my friend. We have been friends for a very long time. She has seen me ebb and flow and go through all kinds of things. So I, when I tell you my heart is so full right now, I love God. Yeah. Oh, God, I love him. So can, can we end with a little worship? Do y'all mind? Can we, cause just, just for me, can, can we stay in a little bit? Yeah. Just, just for me. Come on, you got to love. Can you love on him a little bit?
on your life, trust him, and then participate from the word. He needs your participation in the word that's sitting over your life. You got to join in. You got to participate. You got to feel like the application. You got to go to the
That's what you're doing? That's what you're going? You're going to get there in time? You're going to make it?
It's still recording? Yeah. So it just, it just, it just got me walking past.